Hello, it's Mary here again. I'm speaking from Basingstoke. And this Sunday is the uh, Sunday before Lent. And on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. And the beginning of Lent. When people sometimes put a, a sign of the cross in ash on their forehead. Um, so uh, I wonder what, if you're giving anything up for Lent. Or what you're doing for Lent. What we're going to do is send... Um, a sheet out each week to um, give you some activities to think about during Lent and some things that can help save the planet. Um, some of us are going to give up uh, some, some meat uh, meals or going to give up meat for Lent. Um, so uh, we'll just think about uh, what things we can do to save our planet. So first of all, we've got Anna and Will doing the reading. Barney's going to be doing the story. And then Ed and Ella are doing the prayers. First, we'll have a couple of songs. I haven't got my guitar today. Uh, we've got a couple of action songs, so I can show you the actions. So the first one is, I am a city on a hill. I am a light in the darkness. Jesus living in me can change the world. I am a city on a hill. I am a light in the darkness. Jesus living in me can change the world. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. Let it shine, let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. Let it shine if God is for me. Who can be against me? Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. We are a city on a hill. We are a light in the darkness. Jesus living in us can change the world. We are a city on a hill. We are a light in the darkness. Jesus living in us can change the world. Let our light shine, let our light shine, let our light shine. Let it shine, let our light shine, let our light shine, let our light shine. Let it shine if God is for us, who can be against us? Let our light shine, let our light shine, let our light shine. Uh, next one is, um, Our God is a Great Big God. And I think uh, many of you know that one. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. He's higher than a skyscraper, deeper than a submarine. Wider than the universe and beyond our wildest dreams. And he knows me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands and there's another one actually about God being just uh, our God looking after us our God is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing that he cannot do our God is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing that he cannot do the rivers are his the mountains are his the stars are his handiwork too our God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. The reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain, where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became a dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could have bleached them. And... There appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not, he did not know what to say. They were so frightened. 
Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, who I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of, God, Son of Man had risen from the dead. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Barney and I'm the storyteller for today. Today's story is called Heaven on Earth. You know what I mean? This is like when you have such an amazingly good feeling that it's like being in heaven. Some people call it heaven on earth. Um, maybe I was thinking for you, it might be an experience like when you're going to bed, you've had a bath, you're nice and warm, you're snuggled up in your bed, and your mum's telling you a lovely story and she gives you a cuddle and says good night. And you know that she loves you really, really, really deeply. And you know that you love her back. And there's that lovely sense of peace, and togetherness, safety. It's like heaven on earth. You know, you couldn't get better than that, could it? Or maybe it's sometimes like um, a time that's really special. Maybe like a birthday where all your best friends are there. And your dad says something really nice about you. And you get some lovely presents. You feel really special. You know, you're kind of the people you love are around you. And you feel really looked after. And it's exciting and um, you feel important. It's a bit like heaven on earth. I had the same experience when I got married. It's just like a big party. All my family were there, my wife's family were there, were there, and we were just celebrating our relationship, our love for each other. And it was really overwhelming. You know, halfway through, I suddenly looked around me and everybody I knew and loved was there. And we were having a lovely meal and we'd had a beautiful service where we got married and had this beautiful woman who was ready to be my wife for the rest of my life beside me. It was really transforming experience out of this world, heaven on earth. So those are places maybe at the times when it's about people. There are other people have experiences of heaven on earth uh, when they go to certain places, they, they maybe go to a special place. Uh, often, heaven on earth is maybe when they're in nature, when they, when they see the wonder of the world and how beautiful it is. And they're, they're overwhelmed with a sense of uh, majesty and beauty in the world. Often these places are high up. Um, here's one that I went to. This is um, down there, that little building is called the Hermitage in um, the Hogger Mountains. And those are the mountains behind. And there's just one little man lives in there. And the nearest town is a hundred miles away. And when you go there to the Hermitage there in the middle of the Sahara Desert, in the middle of Africa, it's amazing. There's a great sense of space and it's really grand, but you're, but you're really on your own. You really have this sense of how small we are, how massive the world is. Um, so sometimes places can make you feel like heaven on earth. Sometimes it can be people. Um, in the Bible story today, Jesus has this experience, but, but he has both. So he goes on a walk with his best friends and they've been together for six days, having a really close time. And they go up a hill, a mountain. And he has this amazing experience of being transformed by love. Um, but being man and God is different for him. He, he actually does physically change as well. So not just like on the inside, like you and me, changes on the outside. And he starts to shine. The God in him starts to shine out. It's amazing. He literally sort of becomes this bright white figure. And other characters arrive. So people from heaven come out of heaven and start to be join this, this amazing love experience. 
So they all join in. So there's Peter and James and John and Jesus and Moses and Elijah, all these amazing people from heaven have all come out to kind of be with Jesus and to tell him that they love him. Um, and even his dad turns up and speaks and says, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. So Jesus must be feeling amazing at this stage. He has this experience of heaven on earth in a really powerful way. And I think it helps take him on his journey in to do all the work that he has to do in his mission for later. So those are stories about how sometimes the world is transformed and changed to be heavenly and holy. Let's say our prayers. Dear Lord Jesus, help us to make heaven on earth. Help us to take time to love one another and help us to make time to go to special places where we can feel your presence. Amen. Dear God, we hope that trees survive the colder winters and I hope that our leaders will put us in to good positions for the environment and no one will throw rubbish away. Amen. Uh, dear God, um, I feel like really bad when all the trees are being chopped down. Um, and I really like want um, people to stop chopping down trees and use different materials because it makes me really sad seeing all our nature going. Also, I like people to you or to not travel as much so the icebergs don't have to melt. Or you could use an electric car. Amen. So the blessing, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love and those working in the NHS to help so many people today and always. Amen. Hi Sharla. Hi. How are you today? All Good, right. thank you. So before we get on, there is one spot the difference. I hope you can find it. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a little uh, leaf collage. Um, so if you go out for a walk, go out in the garden or somewhere like that and you can collect different leaves. We have some different shapes, little sizes, patterns and things like that. And then you can pick a couple of your favourite and you will need some white paper, some blue and um, colour pieces of paper, crayons and scissors. Um, and then you pick out your favourite one. So we've got this one here. And then I will place paper on top. Do you want to hold it? Yeah. Do you do it upside down so you can see the veins more? On the leaf. Oh yeah, so you turn it round that way, that might be so you can it. Yeah. see the veins. Yeah. Then with the side of your pencil, just push down a little bit, and you'll see it starts to. Ooh. And what sort of crayon do you use? Uh, just a wax crayon. A wax crayon. Yeah. Brilliant. Is it a bit difficult with those long nails? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, as you can see, you can see some veins yeah, here. It's coming through. And that sort of thing. And then you'll just carry on with maybe some different leaves and stuff and cut it out. And then, once you've cut them out, I think there's one over here that's cut. Oh, yes. Stick it and off. then, once you've um, cut it out, you then get your glue stick and glue either on the paper or on the leaf. And then. We've already started making a couple, so we'll add it to the collection. And then you just stick it wherever you feel like, stick it in the middle there. There you go. You have a nice little leaf collage. Um, so yeah, if you go out on walks, have a look and see if you find any good uh, shapes or something like that. And do send us pictures of your collages. And you can obviously, what you could do is make a tree out of them. You can make like a little stem and then make a little tree with all the oh, leaves. Oh, yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. You could do the trunk, couldn't you? Yeah. And then put the leaves. Oh, yeah. that's a great idea. Lovely. Thanks very much, Charlotte. That's all right. 
Um, so Great. this is what the different words is. Valentine's balloon, we have for that the thought Valentine's Day it's going to fall down. Which today is Valentine's Day, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Great. And then I think there is another one, but it was very subtle. It's my new nails. I keep changing my nails every week now. You get different nails every single week. I don't know if I had them on last week. I don't think you had those ones no. on. You had the bubbly ones on little, last week. Little seashell and then a bump a bit on this one. Um, Excellent. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next week. Great. Okay then. Bye. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye bye.